Hello YouTube, it's Rob, One Strange Journey, and today I'm going to go over with you the five most common mistakes that people new to the RV life make and how to avoid them. All right, the first most common mistake is research. Research, research, research. Can't say it enough. From the rig you're going to purchase to the rules of camping at these campgrounds to how you're going to get to these campgrounds, how you're going to get to your destinations. Let's start with the rig you're going to set up. It's important you get the right size. You see so many people that go in, they buy these rigs, they find out it's not the one for them. It's not the one for their family. And they want to bring it back. They want to get their money back and they don't understand. You're not just going to go back to camping world and they're going to refund you your money. You're stuck with that thing. And you're almost every time you're going to be negative on it. You're going to be under the table on it. You're not going to get nearly what money you put into it back. Take your time. If you can rent one, rent one. If you can borrow one from a family member, even if it's not the exact one, borrow it and find out what you like, what you don't like. But it's important you take your time and get the right one the first time. Make sure it's not too big. Make sure it's not too small. You know, go down to the RV lot. Spend half a day in one of those RVs. Spend your time. Don't rush. Take your time. Take your family in there. I've said it before. Take your kids. Take everyone in there. See how you guys fit in there. See how you like it. Because you're going to be stuck with that one for a while. If you get a $100,000 RV and you try taking a camp back to Camping World, they're going to offer you like seventy dollars back. Maybe. Maybe. Depends. So you're going to be stuck with it. Take your time. Research, 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 research what your needs are. What kind of camping you're going to be doing. It all dictates. Like I'm a pedestal queen. I guess that's what they call me. Because I don't boondock. I'd love to boondock. I can't boondock. We live full time in this. We don't get to play games. So we're not set up to go off road. Camp overnight out in the middle of the desert. Out in the middle of those beautiful areas I'm just dying to be able to do. Someday. But not right now. It's what fits our lifestyle. And I research the heck out of it. RV parks, campgrounds, they all have different specific rules from animals to kids to the size of your rig. Campgrounds for mid-sized rigs, they're a little bit more limited on larger rigs sometimes. RV parks are where you want to go if you have a 40-footer like me. They're the easiest. You can still get to some campgrounds, but that's where the research comes in. Always research ahead of time what can fit there. And understand, especially during season, you have to get reservations pretty far in advance to some of these campgrounds and all of them but some of the more touristy areas that a lot of you are probably going to want to go to so call ahead find out check their pet policy make sure you're in compliance mostly i've said it before if you're only there for a night you just say you have one dog if you have three dogs and you, know, you have a two dog max or something just take dogs out one at a time that's what i do i mean you didn't hear that from me i'm not taking responsibility if you get in trouble but that's what i do so yeah definitely research the campground you're going to go to make sure you get everything uh tidied away there and then the route especially if you're new to this especially if you got a bigger rv research the route and how you're going to get there google street view is your friend you can cruise from your starting point all the way to your end point you can go the whole way what i like doing is especially on mountain highways taking a look where are the pull-offs how far apart are the pull-offs where am i going to go if i have to pull over on the side of the road is there an area to pull over on the side of the road there's some areas on some of these highways that there's not but you want to be aware of all those things and you know are you going to get any sketchy tight situations like in california they have a lot of beautiful places you'll want to go to but the roads getting there are so tight and windy you don't want to get in that situation check it out on street view check it out on google earth looking down from the top on it take your time do your research because it can be a lifesaver you don't want to get down somewhere where you can't get back out you know especially with like low overhangs that's where some there's some apps for that i like using rv life i don't have a code for it or nothing i could help you guys with but rv life's a good one where you can enter in the height of your rig and it'll map for you avoid and low but there's a lot of different apps like that i used to fly small planes and it reminds me of my pre-fight flight planning that's what i do on the rv every time i pre-flight that baby i make sure every turn i'm gonna make i'm gonna be able to do it as best i can it's still never sure proof but at least if you put your best leg forward from the beginning, you have your best chance of being successful. A lot of new people, they just don't do the proper research in those areas. Don't be one of them. You don't want to get in a sticky situation. Another mistake that uh, people make when starting RV life is overpacking. Believe me, I did it too. It's important not to overpack and try to be organized with what you do pack. I mean, here I am a year and a half in and this is what mine looks like. So, don't be me. 
Anyways, when we first packed up for the road, we had all sorts of stuff we shouldn't have had. We packed up boxes of dishes and pans and all sorts of stuff, you know, brought shovels and yard stuff with us. I, I can't remember, just stuff we really didn't need to bring. A lot of new people seem to have that same issue that you just keep packing and packing everything up in your house. You don't got room for it. You got to bring the essentials. So what you need to do is you know, sit down and make a list of the basics. And then when you do start packing, you got to keep it super organized. If you're not organized, you've seen what I got going on. It gets out of hand so quickly. Bring all the essential tools. It's important to have all your tools, not all your tools. I brought a welder for God's sake. I almost brought my power washer. I mean, it's better to not bring enough stuff and then slowly evolve and buy more stuff that you're gonna need over time. That you, once you figure out how much room you're gonna actually have on your rig. I mean, I got a 40 footer, so I got the best case scenario for storage space and I still overpacked. I mean, I brought tent camping equipment. I have never used it. I got a 10 person tent in there. I got three blow up freaking mattresses in there. Beautiful ones. I have no clue why. I bought this shit before we got on the road. I thought I'd be out camping or something. I haven't gone once. So, you know, bring the essentials. We don't even talk about the present I got my wife before we did this. I got one of those mirror things on the wall, you know, that you, that's hooked up to the internet that puts like a personal trainer up there and you sit there and do the yoga and stuff that they're doing. I got that in my house. You won't even believe where it's at. Seriously, I'll, let me show you. You probably... I, we brought it. It's huge. I didn't know what to do with it. I don't even know if you could sell these things. Anyways, I'll show you what I did with it. It was like 1500 bucks. She didn't want to get rid of it. I didn't know where we were going to put it in the RV. For a while, we had it underneath the bed. It was just taking up room. I thought it was going to get broken because it had a mirror in it. So eventually, I built this pallet closet right here in my bathroom, as you can see. It looks better. Right now, it's trashed. My wife's going to see this video and get all pissy with me. Anyways, so I built this, and there it is. Can you see it? It's back behind, behind there. It's in the back. I put it in the back of the closet just to keep it out of space in case one day we get somewhere where she'll be able to use it again. <sighs> the stupid stuff you bring with you. You're probably going to do it as hard as you try not to. But anyways, try to write a list of the essentials and go from there. Be aware you're not going to be able to fit everything you want. You're just going to have to go crazy downsizing, like fire sale, like goodwill, like downsize, give stuff away, sell stuff. Start doing it well in advance because it's going to be harder than you think to get rid of stuff. The hardest thing is the sentimental stuff. My advice for the sentimental stuff, that's all underneath my bed. Almost every bed retracts up. You got a space underneath there. I got all the old sentimental stuff and all my expensive collectibles underneath there. Anyways, yeah, you got less room than you think you're going to have. Okay, this list, it could be a mile long, but I'm not going to take up that much of you guys' time. I'm going to try to keep to the basics. Maybe we'll do a part two if I get more than 20 views on this video, okay? If I get more, if I get more than five likes, three of them are probably from me. Anyways, another important one, which I can't show you because I have the skirting up right now, that I see a lot of noobs do, is sketchy, sketchy, sketchy ass leveling of their RVs. Don't use concrete blocks. Concrete blocks will crack over time. They will fall apart. You'll go lift you'll go lift your little jacks up off that brick one day and you'll watch. It'll just crumble the second the weight gets out from under there. You don't want that to happen while you're up on it. You know, you gotta make sure you're all chalked up. Don't get where your one of your wheels are off the ground to get level. You want those wheels on the ground, you want them chalked up nicely, and you wanna make sure you're level. Especially if you have slides like me. You don't want to open and shut these slides if you're not leveled up. It's important that you're leveled, especially if you're boondocking, you may have issues, but try to get on as level ground as possible before you start leveling out. Now I've gotten in situations where it was just on level grounds and I had a wheel off the ground or two. Just make sure you're chalked up as well as possible on the ones that are still on the ground. It's, it's sketchy stuff. You don't want to have to do that very often. Make sure you're leveled, especially if you got slides. Some RVs, if you have the propane fridges, they won't work if you're not level. It just, it, being unlevel when you're trying to live in that thing, feels it makes you feel like you're definitely in a trailer at that point. Especially if you start bouncing around, if you're not, if you don't have those stabilizers down, you know, you it's very important to be level. So it's one of those little things you wouldn't think you'd have to mention, but you'd be surprised how many new people you see don't even have wheel chocks in. They just throw their little stabilizers down and walk away and they don't understand their RV could still start rolling. You know, you want to be stabilized, you want to be leveled, and you want to be chalked up. So you can see here to help out my fifth wheel with stabilization, 
I've got these front stabilizers here on the front that keep the front end from bouncing around. And I got one that goes underneath the very back also. So I got as many points of contact with the ground as possible. It's very important to make yourself comfortable, keep it as stable as possible. Oh man. Anyways, stepped in dog poop. Another thing that's commonly overlooked by people new to the RV world is maintenance on these RVs. You don't want to let things get out of hand, especially stuff like leaks, roof leaks, any kind of cracks that water's coming into, any kind of rodents, maintenance. You don't want to let that get out of hand. The second anything needs to be repaired, and I'm not one of these safety sallies, but stuff can build up quickly and it can start multiplying quickly. You got to keep on top of things. Once one thing happens, another thing will happen. Eventually you have a honey list that don't end. If you got a leak on the roof and you let that go, it's going to go from a quick little cock job on the roof to all of a sudden you're replacing plywood and dry rot. Stay on top of all the maintenance on these RVs. It's, it's not one of those things that you can let go. It's real important. And the other mistake that a lot of people new to RV life make is not getting the right truck, not understanding their tow capacity. So it's important you research what a truck's tow capacity is that you either have or you plan on getting and also research the weight of the trailer you plan on getting is. You wanna have them matched up. I'm not an authority on it because I kind of bend the rule a little bit on me personally, but uh, they say you wanna stay under 80% ideally. Don't get talked into the one ton if you don't need it. If you don't have a 40 foot RV, you don't need a one ton. If you want one, you can afford one, awesome. But you don't need one a lot of time. You know, one ton they're gonna hit you up with like commercial fees for registration and insurance and they're expensive to buy, they're expensive to fix. Three quarter tons, my favorite truck. It's almost everything a one ton is. It's usually the same engine, same frame, same brakes. Some trucks, like for my year in particular, uh, most seven and a half Silverados. The only difference was the rear springs. So I got a three quarter ton and I got 7,500 pound airbags in the back. I basically got a modified one ton if you think about it. People whine and say that's not legal. You can't legally do that, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not a commercial driver, so it don't matter. Anyways, you can comment down below if you think I'm full of crap. Point is, you want to make sure you got a truck that's capable of pulling your rig. Because it's not just about what you can hold on the back. You can always get airbags to help out with that. But it's also about can you stop it if you're going down a hill, you know? If you're going over some steep mountains, can you slow the whole rig down? You don't want to have an issue there. Which, bonus tip, get your trailer brakes checked when you first get a rig. Make sure they're working. Makes a huge difference. I, I went quite a ways with no trailer brakes. Didn't even know it. Definitely do your research. Facebook. Use it, take it with a grain of salt. There's a bunch of know-it-alls on there, but it's a good start. There's a lot of Facebook groups that can kind of try to guide you, try to help you out a little bit. I usually go on there and just stir the shit, piss people off. It just happens so easily with me. But yeah, make sure you got the right size truck. Bigger's better, you know, it's definitely better. Uh, in my opinion, if you got a 40 footer, get a one ton. If you got something between 30, 35 feet, and this isn't taking in the weight for it, for accountability, but anything from 30 to 40 feet, you can get away with a three quarter ton. Anything under that three quarter ton would be perfect for. I remember when I first started looking at trucks to pull our RV, I was looking at half tons. Didn't even really know much about tow ratings until you become an RV or you never really think much about it. You know, those half ton pickups, they're good for the smaller trailers, but once you start getting the livable trailer, anything over 30 feet long, you gotta go up to three quarter ton typically. You know, they might be capable of pulling. If you're just going across town, if you're just going a few miles, cool, no problem. But if you're gonna go any kind of distance and, and any kind of unpredictable routes, highways that might take you up in the mountains, down some sketchy roads, you're gonna want something bigger. So try to, Try to get something bigger if you if you can. It's always better. Take a look, do some research. That's one thing a lot of newbies, they'll come in here with a half ton, pulling a 35 foot trailer that's just squatting like crazy. You don't wanna be that guy, especially when you're coming down the Rocky Mountains, especially when you're coming over the Sierra Mountains, coming downhill, you don't wanna be that guy. And uh, I will say I'm a fan of diesels. They're a lot more expensive to repair, but dependability, they can be great. They're kind of a pain in the butt in the cold too. That's a whole nother video we'll get into. Anyways, good luck. Comment down below what kind of truck you have and what you're pulling with it. I'd love to hear. 
and uh, thanks for watching and I'd love it if you subscribed hung around I try to come out with at least a video a week and I try to make them a little less cringy every time thanks for watching right birdie right Gertie what do you you like bigger don't you you're a Saint Bernard huh bet you could pull a trailer I think they used to do that nursery books with your kind all right we'll talk to you later